All right. So this is a quick tutorial for assignment number five, which is uh, to create a resume. Um, so I create a new document right here. I choose my print uh, presets right there. Letter, I switch my um, scale to inches. Uh, come on, work with me today. Um, we're having some technical issues. Make sure that I'm in inches right here um, and eight and a half by 11. I do not want to have a facing page. Um, and then we're gonna, oops, I'm scrolling too fast there. I wanna have uh, multiple columns. So we're gonna do three columns and my gutter in between the columns will be about a quarter of an inch. Um, margin, half an inch all the way around. Or why not? Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit from the top. Uh, oops, I don't want to, I want to have it unlinked first. And um, we're just going to add a couple notches. So it's, uh, it's three quarter of an inch from the top. And I want to add a bleed or all around, just, uh, just to make sure. Uh, plug is not necessarily for this type of uh, document. And when I hit create. So uh, I've already selected the text uh, that is provided um, in the uh, in the support folder, which is the Steve Stevenson's uh, um, resume. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, text frame on the side uh, in my pasteboard right there, and I'm just going to paste the uh, information right there. So I have you know basically all the all the information right here on the side. It's not pretty or anything in this, but it's my, you know, it's a good start. So I'm not starting from my document. So I'm going to select it all. Although there's some text overset, you can see in the little uh, bottom right corner down here, the little red square down there. There's a little bit of uh, text overset. And I'm just going to quickly uh, change a few things. I'm just going to change the size of the type because 12 point is pretty big. And I'm not going to use Minion Pro because uh, there's only one uh, style and there's only regular. So there's no uh, there's no bold italic. There's nothing like this. I'm going to switch it to a different typeface, such as I'm going to pick Avenir next because um, I want to have you know a geometric looking um, typeface. And right off the bat, so this is what 11 point. So right off the bat, I want I have my uh, let's see, my uh, zoom window in the way, so I'm not sure where to put it. Uh, there it is at the bottom. There you go, perfect. I'm going to switch this out of the way. Ah, no. So let me arrange things. There you go, make it a little smaller. And I can put my zoom window if it wants to move there. Let's see. Let's get things organized. So, right off the bat, um, I want to create a paragraph style uh, from the main text, basically, right? So, I want to open my uh, paragraph style <clears throat> panel. And I want to just create a new style out of this one that I have selected right here. And I'm just going to apply it, right? And I'm going to double click on it and then call it <clears throat> uh, body copy, just, just for now. So at least I have something to work from. We have uh, this particular exercise is, um, is to work with the grid. So right now we have three columns already, which is great. Uh, but I want to show under view, I want to show my um, baseline grid. Uh, so I go under, uh, I know the shortcut for that. So I never remember where uh, to find that one. So show baseline grid under grid, grid guide, show baseline grid. And that's your, no, that's your, uh, come on, that's your grid. Uh, where is my baseline grid? Come on, show me the baseline grid. So baseline grid. Uh, my goodness, I know. So baseline grid, not snap. So baseline grid. There is the baseline grid. It's kind of like um, a magnetic, quote unquote, magnetic field um, to have the text snapping to all those lines across multiple columns. So things are nice and balanced across multiple columns. So it's, you know, use very useful in like magazine layouts, you know, large documents with multiple columns. So the text is all lined up and, you know, things don't, you know, bounce up and down. Um, the first thing I want to do here is I want to customize my baseline grid. So I know that my type right here is 
um, 11 over, thir over 13, that's 11 point over 13.2. So that's the regular um, leading, right? The regular space in between the lines. So what I wanna do is I wanna go into my InDesign preferences right here. And I wanna go into uh, grids. Yeah, grids right in there. There's my document grid. There's the baseline grid. And then, so it's in light blue, you can change the color, but that's not, not really necessary. And then right now it starts at half an inch from the top, which is, you know, a little bit off from my, my setting of the document. That's why I wanted to change it. Um, so let's start it at 0.75, which is at the, the, my, uh, my margin right there from the top of the page. And then the increment is gonna be 11 points because we have uh, 11 point type. Actually, no, you know what? Let's, let's do it at 13 points. So 13 point, because it's 11 point type over 13, the leading, right? And I'm just gonna keep it like this. So it changed ever so slightly. Now it's, snap, it's snapping to the, the top of my margin. And then my increments between my baseline grid right here is 13 points. So if I grab, let's see, as an example, I'm gonna grab a block of text right here, one right here. And I'm going to just apply it right here. So I'm just going to put like a quick text frame right in there. I'm going to snap it in there. So you can see that the, the text that I have right now is not on the line, right? It's slightly off, right? Because my my preferences or my um, my um, uh, basic uh, my paragraph style, sorry, the paragraph style options, it's it's not turned on. It's not turned on to snap to the grid. So I go uh, back into my paragraph style right here um, and I go through the whole laundry list right here, right? So you have, you know, I have a near 11 over 13. So I'm gonna change it over 13 instead of 13.2. I can hit the preview um, and I'm gonna go into indent and spacing right in here and align to grid right here is turned off and it's, it's turned off, right? It's on none. So I go all lines and now just like that, magically you can see it snaps on, right? You can see the difference before and after. Now it's no matter where I put this text frame, the text will snap to the line. So if I move it down a little bit past the line, it snaps to the next line. So that's the idea, right? So working with grids, working with the baseline grid. Now we can change <clears throat> we can change the baseline grid just to open things up a little bit to make it a little bit a uh, little bit more airy. But I want to keep it tight right now because you know there's a lot of information in this uh, in this um, uh, in this uh, resume. So what I can do now is you know that's the first thing as I can do is I can I'm gonna grab actually you know all that contact information that I have right here um, is I'm gonna keep it separate. So I'm going to grab everything else below that, right? So I'm just going to select all that. I'm using a shortcut. I'm using command shift and arrow down to select every paragraph and every line of the text. And I'm just going to go command X, which is just cut the text out. So I'm going to keep the information here on the side. I'm going to make one large, oh, it's not snapping to my, it's not snapping to my guide. Uh, snap to document. Um, the guy. There you go. Thank you. There you go. Now, uh, please, I have a mouse that is terrible. A cordless mouse and it stops halfway through my movements sometimes. There you go. Now I can paste the text and as you can see, it snaps to all the lines. So first thing I want to do is I want to create three columns, right? So I select my text frame, I right click on it and I go text frame options, which is command B. And I change the number of columns that I have right now. Right now it's by default, it was one column. I turn my preview on and I go, you know, three columns right here. And I want to match my gutter, which is quarter of an inch right here. And now things are flowing perfectly. And as you can see, the text goes right across and it's all lined up. So it's nice and happy. For designers like me, this is like, ah, I like that. You have, um, so I can turn off the, um, the the baseline grid at this point. I don't really need it. Oh, you know what? No, I'll keep it on. Um, what I want to do as well in my body copy, my paragraph style right there, I want to add 
maybe a little space after. So I go back into my indent spacing. I'll do a little space after, which adds a space after my paragraphs. And that is basically what, what it will do. It will just bump it to the next line, right? So but you can see that there's those extra returns in there. That's what, what creates those big gaps in between. Um, so, you know, like I'm not sure about that. Actually, I'm not really happy with this. It kind of really, really flows it too fast, too, too far apart. So I'm going to turn it back off, back to zero. Yeah, so keep it a little tight. And then we'll just keep it uh, just one, just a return in between. It's going to be easier. A um, couple of things to do once you have that text set up, pretty much. Um, you need to have some visual hierarchy, such as you know your employment right there. So this is one of the main, um, uh, we call it um, title, I suppose. Uh, education is another one. So we're going to stylize that. We're going to make it 14 points and bold. Simple, simple, maybe a color. Uh, but we'll just create a new style for that one. Call it title or whatever you want, let's call it, uh, let's make it, uh, let's make it red. And now I can just select your, my education word right there and then apply the title style right there and it's done. <coughs> so things like this are fairly easy to do. What I wanna do again, I see I go back and forth between my paragraph style and what I'm doing. Um, indent and spacing again with those titles, I wanna add a little space before and that'll bump it down, right? So bump it to the next line, right? So. It's just separates things a little bit easier. Computer skill, same thing, apply the title style and that could do it. Um, I want to show as well under my type menu right here, uh, show hidden characters and it shows me all the returns. As you can see right there, those little blue characters right there. Uh, if I zoom in right there, you can see all the spaces in between the words, you can see the returns. Uh, if I had any tabs or anything in like this, it would be also in, uh, um, like for example, a tab would be a, like a Chevron type um, uh, character right here, etc. So you have all those little extra characters that show you how the, basically the, the block of text is um, is built basically, right? So what I want to do is I want to go, okay, so I want to create a new, uh, I'm going to work with, with paragraph styles. So it's basically, um, super easy to use afterwards. So I'm gonna set up the first employment block right there. I'm gonna have Flying Leopard right there. That's the name of the company. So I want that to be bigger. So I'm gonna create a new paragraph style again. So I'm gonna call it company uh, and I'm gonna make it, instead of having your regular, I'm gonna go demi bold, right? For example. There you go. I'm going to keep it like this. Um, this, if that's the date, so I'm going to create another paragraph style again. I'm going to call it date. And this time I'm just going to reduce the size because it's not that important. And I can even do also an indent. So I'm just going to do a left indent of one, yeah, one eighth of an inch, for example. And then there's my information, right? So if I hide, if I hit the W key, you make sure you don't have your your uh, um, cursor in the text frame. If I hit the W key, that shows you the preview, which hides all the guides and all the uh, the uh, invisible characters, and that that gives you a quick idea of what your document looks like. So I have a tiny little thing right there that has just a little bit of a space, a little bit of an indent, and then I have my main block of text right there. So it's not super pretty because it's because again it sticks to the uh, to the baseline uh, grid. But what I can do here, what can I do to improve things? I'm going to change the title. I'm going to add also a space after so it really separates things. There you go. What I could do as well, for example, the dates. See, and at this, this point, I don't even need to select anything like this. I don't have to be in, in the selection. I can just go into my paragraph style window and then I change things directly, right? So if I go, you know, first of all, I'm going to apply the company name right there. I'm going to use my cursor just to go down to the next one. And I'm going to do, do date. And I'm going to do the same thing here, company, and then date again. Um, to work even quicker, you can set up shortcuts for those, um, those paragraph styles. But let's not go there for now. Um, 
what I want to have as well in my body copy because I can see some uh, some weird hyphenation. Uh, agency, for example, is broken right here. Um, website right there. So it creates those weird little gaps right there. So what I want to do is I want to turn off hyphenation. So I go back into my paragraph style option. I turn off hyphenation. That's getting things, you know, that keeps things together, but it also creates widows, meaning one word on at the, um, at the end of a paragraph on its own line right here, such as that Nivea right there. So I want to go back again, this again, back and forth between uh, between the paragraph styles and what you see. I want to go back into my indent and spacing right here. And I want to turn on my balance ragged lines right here. And that, just by doing that, it kind of creates a more balanced block of text and it gets rid of the, uh, of the widows just like that. So this is starting to look decent. The date right there, I'm not a fan of, of the date again. So I'm going to, what I can I do here? I want to make it a little bit more prominent. Um, but I can make it smaller and I'm going to make it all caps, right? And I'm just not going to get rid of, I'm going to get rid of the, the indentation. But I'm going to make it 7% black. Maybe. So it's bolded, but not as, as prominent. So again, just by, by, by having your paragraph style set and by changing one thing, it changes everywhere within your documents. So it can be, you know, that can be your, it is definitely your friend. Um, blue, blue Duck Recruit, okay, so I guess that's a company name. Um, as an example, I'm going to open my company name. Um, actually, I'm, I'm going to open my body copy first. Uh, and as you can see, there's the name of the body copy, the name of your paragraph style right here, and you can create your shortcut. So most of the short, most of the keys on the keyboard are already taken by the software. So if I go Command Zero, it's already taken. It's uh, it fits to uh, to page. So you have to use if you have an extended keyboard uh, with the number pads on the on the right hand side, you can use only those numbers on the right hand side. So you can use Command and one of those numbers, or Command Shift and one of those numbers. So personally, I set up my body copy as Command Zero because that's my base. Right, and it shows you my command zero. So I just click on command zero, which is what uh, would be control zero, I suppose, on the on the PC. And that allows me to go into my document right here, put my cursor where you know where my blue duck recruit is, and I go hit command zero right there. And it's not working <laughs> today. Oh no, because it's already set up. Um, so what I want to do is I want to do the same thing with my company. And I'm going to do command one this time. And I'm going to do the date as command two, because you know, might as well in you know it makes sense to have it like this. So I go now I go command one. Oh, there's the there should be a return right here, and that's a command two right there. So you have, I need to have a return right here and I go command one and then command two. Just by going like this with your arrows, your arrow keys to go to the next, next paragraph, right? And that's, so that's a quick way to, to, uh, to work really, really fast like this. I tend to work like this. Not everybody is, um, is ready for that type of speed of work, but it allows you to work really fast when you have a large document and you have lots of the same titles and a lot of the same things is I use uh, sh uh, shortcuts to get to one paragraph to another. Again, command and arrows uh, going up and down. So command arrow up gets you to the next paragraph at the beginning of the next paragraph. And here there's a lot of paragraph return. So that's why it bounces off. And then, par and then command shift with an arrow down selects the, the, the whole paragraph. So I'm able to work like this very, very quickly. And I select that paragraph and then go like this, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's, it's a, it's a different way to work, right? But um, you don't have to develop all those things. But what I want to do as well in this uh, specific one is you have here right there, you have software and then you have a list of software right here. So I want to have software to be, again, highlighted. So in this time, I want to create a character style. So what I'm using on the, on the titles right here is Avenue Next, 11, Danny Bold. So I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to do Avenue. Demi bold, 
11. So that's my highlight. And I want to create a character style because a character style is just to highlight or to change one character or one word within a paragraph. If I change my, uh, my style right here within my paragraph and I look into my paragraph styles, I can see the little plus right beside it, meaning it's been overridden, right? And I can clear that. I can go, you know, right, I can uh, option, option click on it. Um, but I don't want that. I want to create a new character, a new character style for this uh, for this specific uh, this specific highlight. So I'm just going to call it Demi Bull. Call it Spade Spade, right? And you can create a, a shortcut as well for that one. So I'm going to go again. This one Command Zero is already taken, so I'm going to go Command Shift Zero to create my um, oh, so I recommend. Command shift zero, yeah, to uh, to create this paragraph style. So now I can go into my paragraph only, for example, and I can select one word and then highlight it with my shortcut. Or I can select one letter and I can apply, apply it, right? So either I click on it or apply it. To clear them, I just select them and then click on none. So that's the quickest thing. So having those, again, having those, those paragraph and the character styles, really help you to uh, to um, typeset uh, pretty much everything uh, in your document. So I'm not going to do the whole thing, but this is kind of you know the basic skills to uh, to work with um, with uh, paragraph styles and whatnot. So on another note, I'm going to put this down a little bit. Everything you know, as you can see, everything shifts uh, and everything snaps to um, the, the the baseline grid. But what I want to do, say, for example, I, I shift this down to give myself a little bit more room at the top for my uh, name and information that I want to transfer over. But as you can see, there's this evil, evil dog.com right there. It's still at the bottom of this column. And so I want to have this block of text right here sitting at the very top right here, right? So it's, you know, so it's a, it's a nice break. So a lot of you guys do this. You just hit the return key multiple times until it's at the right top. It's at the, the, at the top and the right uh, location. However, what happens is if you change your text frame again, then this happens and you're like, ah, how do I get rid of this? So instead of doing a bunch of returns like I did right here, do a hard, what's called a hard return. A hard return, instead of hitting, uh, hitting the return key, you, you hit the enter key. And that bumped it to the next column. As you can see, this, I still have a couple of, uh, I still have a couple of return keys on top of that right there. What it does, and that's why I wanted to uh, keep the uh, my invisible characters visible, is this is a re your your regular return, your paragraph return, and this is your hard return, and this basically bumps the text to the next column or to a next text frame. Uh, so if you have multiple text frames, it does the exact same thing. It just bumps it to the next text frame when they are threaded together, when they are linked together, when the text flows from one text frame to another. So that little character right there. Is your friend when you have multiple columns. Another another return because there's three types of return. There's the regular return, there's the hard return that I just showed, and then there's the soft return. And the soft return is nothing but a um, uh, it's called a line break. So when you have a large paragraph like this, for example, I'm gonna get rid of uh, I'm gonna get rid of this um, return right here. So if you have this long paragraph right here. And if I hit uh, if, if I hit the regular return right here, I'm just going to put a return right there. It just you know breaks my text, right? So it you know does this, right? So what I want to do is I want to do a soft return. So in this case right here, I want to put snowboarding on the next line right here, and that creates this character right here, this little back to line kind of thing. So that's a shift return, right? A regular return. Hard return disappears because it goes to the next column which doesn't exist, uh, or soft return which just puts a line break within your paragraph. Right? So that really helps when you have very large paragraphs and, and paragraphs that are set with, let's say, a space after. So in this case, uh, in this particular exercise, everything snaps to the grid. So you don't really see the difference. Um, but if you have a block of text, um, for example, I'm just going to do that very quickly on the side. Still with face all the text. Ooh, this is not happy. Um, and I'm not going to snap it to the grid like this. 
So as an example, um, as an example, here you have your your uh, your paragraph return right here, and everything is in the is is in the same uh, space. For example, right here, there's no there's no space after your your uh, paragraph return right here. If I go into my control bar up here, um, my let's see, my uh, zoom tools would get out of the way. That'd be great. Um, if I go into my my paragraph controls right here, I have a space after right here. And then that creates a space after. So that creates a separation between my paragraphs. In the case of this uh, resume, everything snaps to the grid. So this is not available. Uh, however, if I want to go again, if I want to do a, uh, if I do have everything in the same paragraph right here, but I want to create a line break, I go again, a sh uh, shift return is a soft, it's called a soft return. And that creates this, char this character right here. But everything stays within the same space. It does not have it does not have that gap in between that we have right here, right? So this is what a soft return does. It, it makes it go to the next line without breaking the paragraph as if it was like a regular return like so. Right? Anyway, quick demo. I digress. I go too far off the, the grid. Um, so here we created a hard return, which bumped the text to the next column right here. And what I want to do, I want to get rid of those. Actually, I want to get rid of one of them. But it lines up to, of course, the the text. It, the text lines up to the grid. So if I want to have the exact same, um, the exact same space right here to have the text lining up right here, right? For example, I just created a quick line right there. All I have to do is, you know, create. Oops. Um, come on, stay up right there. All I have to do is hit the return key right there and then select this return right here and then go into my paragraph style and then apply the title style, right? Which is the same as that. So and that creates the same amount of space and then that's happy right there. So that's a quick trick as well to get to, uh, to have things lining up like so, right? So we have a good alignment, you know, things are happy. Computer skills, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a hard return, which is the uh, enter key instead of the return key and it bumps it down. And then I'm gonna bring it back up like this. So something like this is fairly quick. Again, you, I mean, I, there's a lot of things that I, I still need to do in this, uh, in this part of their um, information, but it's a good start. So what I wanna do now is I wanna create something for the yeah, information, uh, the contact information, the name and all that type of stuff. So I wanna go, you know what? I'm just gonna squeeze it down to two columns. Um, and then what I can do here, what can I do here? I'm not going to do uh, paragraph styles for this particular one because there's just too many of those. Uh, and it's just kind of a one-off. So I'm gonna make the Steven, Steve Stevenson much bigger. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna cut it out first. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on its own text frame. It's gonna be a lot easier, a lot easier like this. So I have a little bit of a flexibility. Uh, what I can do here, uh, you have, uh, I can center it so it's easier, but you have also, um, you know, you can do paragraph shading, uh, for example. Uh, so basically the whole paragraph is shaded instead of, uh, instead of um, uh, bringing your color to the actual uh, text frame, you can do that as well. Uh, swatches, uh, no color, sorry, right there, swatches. So if I go do again, same thing, I can, you know, select my whole text frame and apply a color, um, or I can select my paragraph and add a shading. And then uh, within the very, very end of your control bar, the little hamburger menu in the upper right, uh, you have paragraph border and shading options down there. And then here you, it, it opens up this little dialog window you can create a border on it, and I wouldn't be, a, I'm not a big fan of that. You can switch between border and shading. So I'm going to pick on my shading. There's my preview right there. It's black by 20% by default. I have to pick a color. So I'm going to go red and I'm going to go 100%. And then at this point, you can also change the color, the, the sorry, the corner. You can uh, round them up if you want to. It's going to be really, really silly looking. 
Um, you can offset it as well. Offset meaning it, you expand the top or the bottom or the left and the, la and the right. So I'm gonna expand it at the top and expand it at the bottom. So you have all the, those controls over your, your paragraph. And this is just within, it lives within your text. It's not an object. It's not a color of your text frame. It is just attached to the paragraph. So you can create, again, you can create a paragraph style with that. That might be a little bit overkill for just a one-off. But I just want to show you, you know, the the uh, the option. And you can click to frame. Um, you know, do do not print or export. That's just uh, for you to highlight things in the documents. Uh, but it does not print on it. it does not print. Um, you know, so there's you know there's all those options as well. So I'm just gonna you know just show you that. Uh, Steve Stevenson, and because we need contrast, I'm gonna put his name in white. And in heavy, there you go. Uh, we have some personality out of this thing. Um, what I want to do here, all that information that I have here, I'm going to go back into my paragraph styles, uh, switch it to the date, no, not the date, sorry, the company. Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit wide. So you know what, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight those, remember in my character, highlight, I have a demi bold. So I'm just going to select that, just put the demi bold on it. And again, I can use my shortcut um, command shift left arrow selects one word at a time and then command shift zero is my shortcut for that so I can literally just do this just by using keyboards I don't have to use my mouse to go back and forth between my character style and highlighting but that's just me that's just the way I work and then the phone number I missed that there you go um, there is there's my information. It's a bit long, so again, here I'm going to stop uh, return there. So it's not the best because it's still pretty high and pretty close to one another. I'm just going to move that block of text. I got room. So it's super boring. <laughs> uh, one of those uh, one of those exercises uh, within this uh, this assignment is to create a um, some text wrap. So uh, let's put like let's say a fake image frame in there. Uh, I'm gonna just put a frame to it so we can see it. So there's my image frame. So this would be, let's say, your portrait in there, right? And uh, if you create a text wrap around it, so if I open my text wrap options right here, my text wrap panel, I mean, uh, you can see that there's no text wrap attached to this thing. And if I actually put one in there, it shows me the, the, the I'm gonna zoom in quickly. It shows me the, the, basically it's almost like a magnetic field basically. So if I click around it, you can see this little thin little blue line around it. And if I keep on increasing this thing, it'll start to push the text out of the way, right? Um, so I don't want that right now. I, I just wanna have, you know, a quarter of an inch like all the way around. And what that does is, you know, that text right there that I have lining up to my column right here I can move it to the, I mean, stretch it to the very, very left uh, margin right there. I can, you know, move it out of the way right there. It shows you what it does. Oh, actually, no, there you go. It shows you what it does. But if I move it up, it just gets completely bumped off and over to the next column. So that's part of the exercise is to create uh, some text wrap around an object uh, within your, uh, your resume. So this, again, it's an, it's an image frame for a portrait. Um, but you can create just a block of color or some graphic element of the logo of your uh, of your um, uh, company. Uh, if you are a um, freelancer, uh, you can move it into a different location, for example, and that really messes things up. As you can see, it's like it's that magnetic field that pushes the text out of the way as I move it around. It just bumps everything around and it just rearranges things. So I just want to keep it up here. Just for just for placement purposes, right here. And I'm just gonna make it taller like this, so it bleeds off. No, I didn't actually. There you go. So if this was a graphic, you know, it would bleed off the edge of the page right there. So I'm matching it to the to the bleed right here, 
and it's just a just a graphic element in there again your your uh, let's see what i could uh, find quickly to uh to fit in there i'm gonna close this window there you go um, so i'm using the shortcut to fit frame but there you go see so there you go steven steve stevenson is an illustrator and he does some really cool stuff for example right so this is very very much you know the basic stuff of this is not lined up there you go that's better um you have an image with a text graph you have a paragraph with a fading you have a character uh character style which is um which is a, just a highlight within the paragraph uh we've set up a bunch of paragraph styles just to uh, flow uh, and typeset your paragraphs so this is you know this is pretty pretty quick and pretty basic stuff and um, again, one more thing we can do um, just to have, you know, little separators. Uh, for example, we could do, you know, in the title right here, again, you have in your, uh, in your paragraph style options, you have again, remember the, um, the, the shading uh, that we did for the Steve Stevenson uh, block on the top there. So we could do the exact same thing again. So it's, it's uh, consistent. Um, so let's try that. Um, have our shading. Uh, we're gonna do that shading. We're gonna make it 100%. Um, we're gonna round the corners. What looked at that kind of what we did up there. So we're gonna reduce the roundness a little bit. There you go. So they kind of match. We're gonna offset it. Oops, not that much. Just top and bottom. Top and bottom. But now my text is red on red. So I have to switch my character color to white. And I'm gonna center it. Let's see if I center it. Is it going to be happy? There you go. Yeah, like so, right? So just changing again one paragraph style very quickly, you know, suddenly you have something that makes sense over here. Of course, this is being uh, I'm applying the uh, the title style to this one, and of course it creates that big red block. Uh, so uh, yeah, so this is a um, this is not working. <laughs> so. Um, I'm just going to use body copy right there to fix that and because I'm going to cheat. I'm going to hit another return until things line up. I shouldn't do this, but I'm showing you what to do and then I'm breaking the rules. But this is, you know, again, this coming together, it's fairly quick. Um, at this point, you can do many, many more things, right? So, you know, your, uh, your main body copy right here. Uh, you could have an indent, just a left indent. Oh, of course, everything is line. Everything is um, influenced by everything. So the the date. Yeah, if I go back to my. Uh, there you see. There's a perfect example. I want to change this paragraph and have one indent on just that one paragraph only. So I go to my body copy. I apply a left indent, and then everything indents. Right, every other paragraph indents with it. I'm going. What is going on? All that is, is the other paragraph styles that I made, the, you know, the, the title style, the, the, the company, the date, all that stuff. All of those are built upon my body copy, my original first paragraph. So I'm gonna start with the title. And you can see in the general right here in the list, right there, it says based on body copy. So if I, I paid attention at the beginning, I missed that. I should have put you know, no paragraph style and then by changing my body copy paragraphs in, uh, uh, indentation, it would not have applied it to the title style. So here I have to go back again and then I gotta get rid of my left indent. So unfortunately I screwed up uh, at the beginning, but it's easy to fix, right? So again, date, make sure it's not based on body copy. So it's independent from one another and then no indentation. And then now, uh, and then the company name as well. Company name, same thing independent from the rest, no indentation. Now I have some, a chance to actually have a little indentation, right? So things are starting to look good. If I had bullet points, right? So another, another tricky one is to create bullet points. So if I have, for example, this guy right there, and I'm 
I'm just going to do that very quickly right there. I'm just going to put a bunch of returns on those guys instead of commas. And I'm going to replace those with bullet points. All right, so all of those, for example, I want to have bullets. So I go into my control bar at the top right there and I add my bullet right up here, right? So I click bullets and there is my bullet point. Great. Again, I'm going to create a new paragraph style for this one. So I'm going to go I'm going to call it bullet. This time I'm not going to uh, based on body copy. So I'm going to make sure I don't make the same mistake. No paragraph style and click OK. So this is great. I have my bullet, but you know what? It's not the greatest thing. So I'm going to edit it and I'm going to my bullet down here. Um, bullets and numbering right here. So by default, it is the bullet uh, character, which is, um, I think it's Option eight or Alt eight on your keyboard. And by default, the space, uh, the text after is, this is the, um, the, I suppose, character for tab. If you click on the little arrow on the side right there, it chooses tab, or you can have an M space, an M dash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all those different things. So I have a tab by default, and this is what the tab character looks like. It's like a little Chevron and a T. And there's no character character style applied to the, the tab itself. And I don't have a, a special character. So if I want to change my character, instead of having a little round bullet, I want to make, you know, for example, the star one right there. You know, those are the standard ones that are already preset, right? Or a little diamond, right? So they're not that great looking. So I can create a new one or I can add a special character. But within Avenir, it'll show you within Avenir, you have all those what's called glyphs, right? So you have all the characters from the alphabet, the regular alphabet. And as you scroll down, you have all the special glyphs and all the special characters such as the little Apple um, icon. Uh, but I'm looking for like maybe a, a square, you know, or an arrow or something a little bit different. And Avenir does not have anything. So what I look for is I look for Zap Dingbat. And Zap Dingbat, uh, a Dingbat is just a weird character <laughs> that's basically they look like little icons such as crosses, arrows, check marks, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, little heart shapes, numbers, et cetera. So Zap Dingbat has some funky characters that you can use as a bullet. So let's say, I don't know, uh, uh, what can we use? Let's use, let's use something absolutely ugly. This thing right there, this uh, looks like a paramedic. So if Steve Stevenson was a paramedic, that uh, would kind of apply, right? So you can go, you know what? I'm gonna add that right there. I'm gonna click okay, and there's my character right there. So if I select that in my in my bullet, there it is. Um, great, click okay. That's awesome. The only thing is I want it red. I want it a little smaller. So at this point, again, I have to go into my character style, create a new character style, double click on it, and call it bullet red. I don't change the, the typeface. I'm not touching this. I'm just touching the size of the typeface. I'm going to make it eight point, And I'm going to change the character color to red. And click OK. Now I have to go back into my paragraph style again, get to my bullet, double click on it, double uh, select my bullet style and numbering. And here I have my character that is red. That is uh, black right now. It's not red. But all I have to do my character symbol right there is I have to apply the character style. So there's the demi bold that we have for the uh, the highlights within the paragraph, but then there's my red bullet right there. And if I, as I said, select it right there, it's already red and it's smaller, just like that. If I go none, it's black. My bullet red character is red and there it is done. So that's how you work with bullets. Now, if I had a bullet right here, it, well, actually it works quite well. It actually aligns everything to the, the indentation right here between the bullet and the, and the first word right there. To change that again, you go back to your paragraph style, you go back to your bullet and numbering, uh, no, sorry, you go to your indent and spacing. And this is where it gets a little tricky. You're, there's a left indent and then there's a first line indent. Right, so the, the left indent is this. The whole indent, the whole paragraph gets indented. 
there's a first line indent, which is that. So you can do a negative. Well, in this case, I want to line it up to software, right? I want to line it up to the, oh, actually, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I can line it up. And I want to change, you know, my, so there's always a positive and a negative indent with that. So work with this to understand how it functions up to a certain point, it won't let you, but this is how it functions, right? So first line indent is your, your text and the left indent is the whole paragraph, right? So you have to have, you know, let's say in this case it's 0.25 indent and then your first line indent is a minus 0.25 as if it, because if it was the same as the as zero like this, this is what it would happen, right? So it gets, it, it get familiar with that and how it functions. Uh, but basically it's math, right? So you have to have an indent and a negative indent for things to, to line up. So it worked out pretty good in this case. It was already preset properly. Uh, and you can see this one is not an indent, doesn't have a bullet, so there, I can do that. And again, I can do my demi bold to highlight that, for example, right? So at this point, I am way too close to my edge at the bottom down here. I'm completely off my um, my uh, my margin right here. <laughs> so I want to do a hard return again. And then I lost my, where you go, my computer skills there, right there. Um, I want to add a little space in between. So yeah, so things are, you know, you can, Lap of resume together pretty quickly. And at this point, this is super, super basic stuff. Uh, you can go, you know, completely crazy for a graphic or shape around the corner, you know, like the, that shape, for example, in my, in my, uh, that I have there that has the, the text wrap, uh, you know, in my corner. I can, you know, using my, um, my uh, direct selection tool, I can select the path right there. I can put it in an angle. Um, I can make it wider and it'll push everything out of the way. Yes, completely out of the way. Uh, it's not very pretty what I'm doing, but it's fun. Uh, oh, it's better. So you can, okay, I wanna do this. There you go, this is what I wanted to do. Um, changing my text wrap. Oh, I thought I kept the uh, window open. I did not. Be right back, Edwin. I'm just doing a breakout room with Flora. Yeah. Uh, by changing my text wrap from uh, from the regular text wrap around all bounding edges, I can go around uh, object shape, um, and I can. So there you go. No, it's completely disappeared. Um, for some reason, it's completely disappeared. The subject bounding box. There it is. My bounding box allows me to have that um, again. My my text wrap to follow. Uh, that weird angle uh, that I have. I can just, you know, add a little bit of space to the right hand side. And it's not working right now. What's going on? Work with me. Come on. And I don't know what's going on right now. It's things are not happening. Okay. okay. Oh, maybe I have to, no, never mind. Never mind. But this is what you can do, right? You can create some really funky shapes. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't do that. I would do, I would probably do a rounded corner as well, just to match, you know, my rounded corner that I have here. Uh, that's under object, corner options. There's my rounded corner. There's my preview, make it a little smaller. You know, something simple like this. You can put, uh, you know, color background in, in the back of your uh, of your document. Um, Dylan was asking, actually, is it useful to create a master page uh, for this particular document? Not necessary, but on the other hand, if you do, if you uh, add, for example, your, um, uh, for example, address or uh, yeah, yeah, we'll just grab the email and phone number just for just for fun, and we're gonna just do that in the master page. We're gonna set it up in the master page. So master page is if you double click on your master page right there in your page palette, is uh, it's basically your template, right? So anything you put in the master page will appear in your document. So if you you know cut and paste this uh, text in there, 
Uh, I want to make it small uh, and I want to put it uh, maybe at the bottom of the page or something. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want to do this. I want to do E and Like this, Ooh, that's too, too wide. Like so, for example, you have this little tiny little marker at the bottom of your page. And this will appear now in my document right here. If I click back on my document, it'll be there. You can't select it because it's in the master page. And if I create a new page, such as a cover letter, you know, I drag a new, uh, new master into my document right here then it's ready to go, it's right there. And then I can, you know, create a new, new text frame and go to it many concerned. Oops, I mean, I'm still in my, uh, my bullet. There you go. I have not only a, a character style, but a paragraph style applied. So I gotta scrap all that, make sure you work without any of those selected. And there you go. Now you can type anything you want, right? In this uh, fill with this over text. And then you have your cover letter. And then you have your little element down at the bottom with your contact information. So that gives you, that's that's part of the, uh, the exercise as well as to work with uh, master pages. In this case, technically it's a one-off, it's a one page. So if your um, resume spreads over two pages and if you want to have a cover letter, and create a quick master in there and just apply it. And it's, you know, when it's quick and easy to do. So working with master pages, uh, working with styles, uh, working with uh, proper swatches, uh, it's basically setting up your toolbox. Uh, if I want to change my color, for example, because I've applied a color that is in my swatches, for example, if I double click on my color, I can change the color right here. You know, I can just bring the, bring the, the magenta down a little bit and now it's orange. Just like that and it changes wherever that color is applied it changes everywhere within the document the cool thing about this is if i save it quickly i'm just going to do that quickly put it on the desktop uh or tv the cool thing about having all your swatches uh again your paragraph styles your character styles set up is when you create create a new document uh I'm create another document right there quickly just create something very very roughly very quickly and now of course there's no character style no paragraph styles but you can load them up you hit the little hamburger menu on the right hand side you go load paragraph styles you find that that document that you just made cv right there open that and here it shows you all the paragraph styles that you've created uh, in the previous document so you can you know uncheck all or you can check them all and then be, whatever you have checked and uh, will transfer over, right? So you know what, I wanna check them all. I just don't need the basic paragraph one and I don't need the bullet, right? For example, right? You can be selective. Uh, come on, how come things are not, okay, well, whatever. I can't deselect that one. For some reason, things are happening the wrong way today. And then as soon as I click okay, they are here for you to use, ready to rock and roll. Same thing with character styles, they've been loaded already. And as far as my color, my color already loaded because there's a character style that, that applies the color. So my color transferred over. My master page is still blank, right? This is my master page, this is, this is my document right here, right? So my master page, same thing, I can go into my hamburger menu in the page panel, go into master pages and then load master pages. And I go and find that document again. I go open, replace master pages, boom, done. It's ready to go. I have my three column uh, from my master with my contact information down here. I go back into my document, and now I'm ready to I'm ready to type. So that's why setting all those I guess as I said, all those tools are very important. So especially in the the GDT ten class, right when you're working with four booklets, 
that could carry the same styles across four booklets. You set up your documents, you set up your master page, you set up your swatches, your paragraph style, et cetera, and then you carry, carry them over from one document to another. So you have consistency, right? That's the idea. Uh, it's the same if you have, um, for example, um, I used to have a client uh, that was of course in the oil and gas uh, and they did a lot of sales sheets, uh, information about their, their uh, equipment, uh, their trucks and their drill bits and all that type of stuff. So we have created a bunch of templates uh, with using their, their corporate typeface, their corporate color, the logo, et cetera. All that stuff was already preset. And when they were giving me new information about X equipment, I would just drop the equipment uh, info in there, format it very quickly with the, uh, the, uh, the paragraph styles that I had set up, and then carry the same style over multiple documents as well. Um, so I did annual reports for them. I did, I guess, uh, I, as I said, a bunch of sales sheets, uh, technical sheets, a bunch of all those type of documents, and they were just being all consistent throughout the whole package of all those crazy things that we did for them over many years, uh, everything was very, very, very consistent. Uh, the day they were acquired, they had to change their color and their logo was just updated ever so slightly. We just changed the link and then updated the color and throughout the, all of those documents again, it was done in a matter of seconds, right? Uh, just changing a color, as I said, as I said, you, if you're uh, in your color swatches, if you change one color, it changes throughout the whole document, and that was very, very, very quick like this. So these are good tips to uh, to abide and to work with. So I guess that is pretty much it. I'm running out of things to demonstrate here. <laughs> that was a lot, wasn't it? A little bit. Well, thank you so much for all the tips and tricks and doing that really, uh, really opened my eyes to what is going on here with this. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And then you can get, you can get into the, the, the as, as I said, you can get into um, more styles for your paragraph styles. For example, if you want to create a, an italic, you know, uh, all those type of things. So you, you have really, really good control over um, typesetting in, in design. In comparison to, of course, Photoshop is not good for that. It's known for not being good for that, and uh, and even Illustrator, it's not that uh, that um, precise. So it is uh, InDesign has really, uh, it's really a powerhouse for that type of stuff. Right? It's really the tool uh, for that kind of thing. Uh, what I could demonstrate quickly, actually, that I totally forgot, is how to edit your tab as well. Um, so for example, here I have, you know, I want to have a tab between my address, the, et cetera. So I want to have a tab right here. And so instead of a return, I hit my tab key right there, it bumps it off. And I want to do the same thing here. Uh, and I want to do the same thing here and here, here and here. But I, what I want, what I want is I want to have all of that stuff lining up, right? So I select my, my block of text right there. I go under type and tabs right here. And it opens up this little ruler that you have right there. And this is the, the tool that needs to be updated. Uh, it's been uh, many, many years. Uh, people are crying and, and begging Adobe to, to update it. It's basically this, um, this, this uh, ruler right there matches your text frame. So my text frame being stretched all the way to the left edge, my zero is at this, the left-hand side right there, right? So. I'm going to change this very quickly because this is this was just to demonstrate the uh, the, the text wrap. So I'm going to move my text frame back to uh, to my where my um, margin is, and I'm going to get rid of that one again. And again, I'm going to open my tab, which is Command Shift Tab, so it would be Control Shift Tab with you on the PC, I suppose. And here you have all the the icons of um, you know, left justified tab, center tab, right aligned, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to have a left aligned, right? So I want to have everything aligned. So I create a new one, right? So I just create that and I just, and this is where the problem is. You have your ruler right here. And then this is where you have to see that tiny little white space in between right there. This is where you have to apply your, your tab. So I have to click in there and this creates this tiny little icon that is barely visible. And it's just a, a very silly um, part of the software. And by dragging it over, everything should line up. So I have my measurement right here, one, one and three eighths. 
I can change my number just by putting my cursor in there and using the, the, the arrows up and down that, that goes by basically um, uh, notches within um, uh, by one, yeah, it goes by one sixty-fourth of it, one sixteenth of an inch, and then things line up. So that's like, oh, this is great. It's, fine. it's looking good. The only thing is, I have this line right there, the Newham, Newham, London, and the postal code. It's still on its own line, and because I have a soft return, another regular return, by putting my cursor right here in front of the twenty-three, and I click, <laughs> and so again. Command, you know, and the vertical line. So, you know, when you have that vertical line, which is a sh like, for example, I'm just going to put that right here. Your shift and vertical line character right there, it's like a little divider, is also the same key as the uh, the backslash, right? So, I'm showing you those characters right here, right? So, by clicking on Command vertical uh, divider, which is Control, it creates this character right there, this little invisible character, which is that little cross right there, right? I'm going to get rid of the uh, the, the space and that is a cool cool character because anything within that paragraph will line up to the number 23. Well that's another quick quick little trick so in as an example right here and and you can put that um, that basically it's like a, a lining up to the character you can put that in anywhere so let's say for example in this in this uh, paragraph right here I want to put it right here for example right so, this whole paragraph right there will line up to this word right here. I just go command vertical divider, and then everything lines up into this to this this special character right there. So this is a this is a bit of a trick, uh, but it's uh, it's really useful when you're using tabs, and when you don't want to uh, to um, um, you don't want to you know put a lot of returns and more tabs because you can also do this. You can also return and then tab and then you know so this extra two characters right there so it's another another cool, cool little trick as well so the vertical character command vertical character on the, on the macintosh and then i think it's control vertical character on a pc um lines things up within your paragraph so that's a cool uh, cool little trick so that's how tabs uh function and how you set them up uh if i were to set up a, a tab in front right here of the address right there, it would line up, of course, to that, right? So it would line up to, to this right here. Um, what I want to do here is, for example, I want to have address, date of birth, marital status, all that stuff to line up to the right hand side. So what I want to do is I want to create that again. So I select all of those. I open my tab um, uh, ruler uh, set. So this is exact. So as you can see, you can barely see it. My tiny little character right there. That's a left align right there. So that's my, uh, my first tab. My first tab right now, I want to change it. I want to create another one right here and I want to right align it. And then you can see now I can line it up right there. And just by again, clicking in front of date of birth, I hit another tab key and right there, things are lining up. That's another, that's another cool trick right there. Left aligned, right aligned tabs, and then things are happening. And you can place this in anywhere you want. But this is, uh, again, that's another cool little trick. So there, I should probably stop the recording <laughs> because it's been long. So I hope that that really helps you guys uh, figure out um, the paragraph styles, the character styles, uh, working with the baseline grid. This is, uh, we covered a lot here, um, but I've covered those in, in other um, uh, video tutorials that are recorded. And it's good practice to set them up uh, in every document that you do. Again, you can carry them over to the next document if you want to. You have all those styles um, that are at your disposal and you can edit them very quickly and it changes everywhere throughout the whole document very, very fast, very quickly. So it, there, these are good tools to set up and to have, right? So I'm gonna quit. And I'm going to let you digest all that. <laughs>